next talk will be uh, presented uh, by uh, the two guys you have there, uh, Renaud and Grégoire, and uh, they'll speak about Citomin, a platform for collaborative analysis of uh, images, and uh, big, big images. Let's upload them for the talk. Hi, everybody. First of all, we were supposed to be three, but Raphael asked, uh, which is our brain and master Yoda of the project is sick today, so maybe it's... Uh, at home looking at the streaming, so if, if he see us, take care of you. So let's talk about cytomine. Uh, actually, in biomedical research and routine pathology, uh, quite everything we are doing heavily relies on semantic annotation and quantification we don't on slice, tissue slice. And most of the time, they are doing using a microscope, uh, so using the real um, physical slice. It's performed manually, so it's very time consuming. And as it's time consuming, people do not analyze all the slide. They are doing uh, their analysis in subregion and using very small sample groups. And generally, these annotations and uh, quantifications are made uh, uh, with experts which, uh, which are isolated, so no collaboration between them. They store their results locally with no system of backup and generally in proprietary format. So if you use this in research or teaching or diagnostics, it leads to a hardly repeatable uh, studies. Actually, uh, pathology and histology are moving to digital, so many uh, research centers and hospitals are buying scanners like this one, which can produce what we call multi-gigapixel images. So the area of the scan is very uh, small, it's 15 by 15 millimeters, but the really resolution of the scanner is so high that the file can be very big. We speak about files which can be more than 100 gigabytes for one file, for one scan, one image. So it's absolutely impossible to browse them quite simply on the web to allow uh, collaborators or students to view them. So with this kind of image, we are uh, able now to perform uh, studies automatically, so quantifications and an annotation can be made by computers in the entire sample because the computers are quicker than us and in large groups. And the result can be easily shared between experts, stored on the cloud, and if possible in open formats to allow uh, research, education, and diagnosing easily repeatable. So it's a first step for open research, open education, open data. In 2010, we started the project Cytomine to uh, build a tool to be able to do that. So uh, first of all, there is no public page. So users, as they are generally researchers or students or clinicians, must authenticate themselves. We have some roles and permission inside the platform, and we can link with the LDAP kind of server for institutional authentication. So when you uh, go on the platform, you have a dashboard like this where the user can see some statistics about his own use of the platform and direct link to the last images and projects he has opened. He can manage these different projects, create a new one, set the different parameters, and directly through the web upload his file. Even if it's a very huge uh, size uh, for, for the, the file, it's mainly depend on the connection than on the platform itself. And when he has uploaded his files, he can uh, uh, set different collections that we called projects and open files in the browser directly. So it's a technology with tiled images, so it's like an open street map, so it's quite lightweight for the client and it needs no extra software uh, installed to be used, which is quite new in this uh, area of expertise. And uh, each user have a layer which is transparent over the images and can draw on it. You can draw points, circles, rectangles, um, arrows, or uh, area drawn by end. And the, the, the objective of this is to point annotations, to, to point structure inside the slides, uh, to, to study, study by humans or by computer. And you can make semantic annotations, you can uh, associate with all these annotations keywords or properties or a text, rich text, to uh, share with other colleagues or, or, or students. When you have an annotation which is li linked to a keyword, each keyword has a color. The annotation takes the color of the keyword, so uh, a colleague or a clinician can easily uh, 
uh, see what you have annotated and why and make some uh, correction if necessary. And uh, the first uh, goal we had is to uh, build a tool for machine learning use. So when you are setting annotations, you tell to the computer, this is how I want you to recognize inside the image. These are structure which can be uh, uh, lo look like, but I don't want you to detect them. So you have a positive and a false positive samples, and you do comparison and machine learning, so you can detect and annotate for you in a larger uh, scale. And uh, we have a system for humans to correct what the uh, software have detected for them, and to uh, have a high level of accurate detection. Uh, for example, this was a study on cancer on the lung, so the software was trained to detect all the areas where there is cancer in the lung. And it can also search similar annotation in the slide, share image to, with colleague with simple URL in email or whatever. And you can do live broadcasting to share your screen with a colleague, for example, to have an advice. You have exactly the same screen. When you move your ones, you, your screen, his, his one will move also. So actually, in our university, in Liège in Belgium, it's used both for research and teaching. And you can see that the profile are quite different. In research, we have very few users, but every kind, every one of them are searchers. And, but we have a, a huge amount of annotations because, because most of them are made by computers and correct by humans. In teaching situation, we have more uh, around uh, 4,000 uh, users, which are mainly students, and all the annotations are made by humans and correct by humans. Uh, as known as teachers. So I will let Renaud explain the uh, informatic part. Okay, uh, thanks, Louis uh, So I'm here to talk about the technical parts of SiteMind, so I will do. Um, well, first, SiteMind is a restful application, open source, of course, composed of uh, different services. The main service is the core of the application, uh, which is wrapped into a web UI. Of course, it's RESTful, so we have many clients uh, to communicate with the core. We have currently a Java client, uh, which can be used in, uh, of course, Java, Groovy, and Scala application for data mining, and a Python client, uh, which is used uh, in machine learning jobs. Okay, the second service is Siteman, Siteman IMS for Image Management Server. Uh, its responsibility is to, to manage image, of course. So, for example, to crop a particular region of interest or to get the needed tiles when you browse through an image. Um, we have also the data mining part, data mining and machine learning, in fact. Uh, with uh, Python and Scikit-learn. And these three services are well encapsulated and uh, they communicate with each other only through HTTP requests. Um, the other components are RabbitMQ as a message broker, um, the databases, so PostGIS and MongoDB. Uh, we have some uh, image libraries, IIP server and uh, OpenSlide. And of course, Nginx as a proxy and load balancer. Okay, here we have the list of all the technologies used in SiteMine. Uh, for the web UI, of course, it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript frameworks. For the core and IMS, uh, there were Grails projects. So we have Groovy and Java and Tomcat. Uh, as I said, we have PostGIS and MongoDB database. And for the IMS uh, part, we have OpenSlide and EEP server, so C and C++ code. Um, all these technologies are cool to use, but it will be a huge mess to deploy them without Docker. Okay, I said Docker. Let's talk about Docker. Okay, here we are the Docker architecture of site mine. So uh, it seems to be complicated. We have the red arrows uh, to represent the uh, classical link between running containers in Docker. But uh, if we see this in details, we can, we can see then we have 
uh, four parts, well encapsulated, and these four parts communicate with each other only uh, through HTTP requests. So it's cool because um, eight components, but only four parts. So if you are uh, uh, really not good to deploy an application, you can deploy on five, uh, four servers easily. Okay, I talk about uh, deployments. So what do you need to install SiteMind? The minimum requirements are simple. Eight giga of RAM, eight cores, uh, 100 uh, giga of storage for images. Without images, it's not really interesting. And uh, an operating system which could support Docker. Okay, it seems to be huge, but two points about that. What one point? It's the minimum uh, requirements if you install all the components on only one machine. The second point is that. Uh, all the classical configuration of laptop developers in this room are often more enough to run a local instance of site mine. But as I said, we have some parts well encapsulated, so it's easy to deploy on four machines. Well, if you are a sysadmin and you have, uh, and you can do that, uh, you can deploy on seven or more servers. Easily. Why easily? Because, yeah, we have a documentation. Cool. Uh, documentation. So if you want to install SiteMine on your servers, you have the documentation. If you want to develop some jobs for machine learning or data mining and plug them into the SiteMine software, it's in the documentation. So doc.sitemine.be. And of course, all the sources are on GitHub with uh, mostly an Apache 2 license. Okay, so thanks to Gregoire, thanks to FOSM organizer, thanks to all of these people, and thank you. Do someone has a quick question? Okay, we have two. Um, the structure of the program reminds me a lot of uh, GIS application for georeference geo and data and uh, all that kind of stuff. For the format of image you use uh, for the photography, I think it's a raster. But how you draw the polygon for the identification, how you can export it in which formats? Um. Oh, the, the the polygons are not drawn on the image. They are drawn with JavaScript on the transparent layer. Okay, so you it's stored it in a... So the, 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 the polygons are stored in database in okay. uh, just a set of coordinates, and it's this image server after, which go inside in of the image to take the uh, region of interest. And uh, with the PostGIS extension, you use a relative geocoding for the image to uh, relate with where is the point? Yeah. Okay. Do you think we can extend your kind of CTOMIL for another use than cellular? Sure. Uh, we only use image of any kind of image. Uh, any topics can be used uh, on it. Actually, we are working, for example, with our art department because they are scanning the paint and they wanted to uh, uh, quantify the default in the paint, the, the, the stuff they have to repair. We are working with uh, people uh, searching plant stuff in ice and stuff like this. So it's not only focused on. Uh, Cytology and histology. This was uh, the, the grant we received to, to build it was focused on that. But any kind of image, we are working with satellite image to uh, measure the kind of crops on, on, on our area and uh, whatever. And do you try with satellite image? Do you have trouble with the standard like WFS and all that? Or you just drop raster and you make the machine learning tool? Oh, well, it, uh, it it depends of the format at the start of the because some sometimes it's proprietary very close format and we have to do a little bit of a re re reverse engineering. But uh, when people ask us uh, what is the best way uh, to work, we, we we answer the JPEG or the TIFF. It will be it will be okay. And after that, we can we can do uh, everything we want. Thank you. Thank you for the question.
And actually, you, you, you can resume that uh, every format supported by open slide, it's okay. Thank you for the talk. Let's applaud them.